Welcome to Big Bun Game Club. Again, joined by Charles. We're going to talk about Ghost Runner that we've been playing for a week or so. Um, a little bit more obviously. Funny, but... I, I, I've been playing it. I've played it for two days. <laughs> uh, man, I've been playing it so much. I got so far. Really? I, I think I'm on like the last leg of the game. Really? I have just not had the time to play. Uh just so much going on with my job and stuff that it's been tough to play. Um, but I've played enough where I've finally actually gotten the hang of it. Um, but I think if I keep playing with the controller, I'm going to get carpal tunnel syndrome. Because pressing this to jump uh, is not easy. Didn't you uh, change the yeah. button format? I didn't have, like I said, I've played, if you look at my Steam library, I've played probably three hours total. Uh. I don't know how long you've been playing, but I did get to the part where the last thing I've seen is the part where um, there's all that like story exposition, and he's like, "We're gonna get you repaired," and then you get to um, there's like some woman that brings out a distress call, and he's like, "Eh, don't worry about her. <laughs> She's nothing. Just one person. Fuck them." Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that part was pretty good. I. And actually, the name was not Whisper. It was Architect. Is the name of the of the uh, guy that talks to you? Are you sure. Yeah, because I, the subtitle keeps uh, crediting him as Architect. Oh, I might not have the subtitles on. Oh, uh, okay. Um, but he does call himself Whisper, doesn't he? Oh, I don't. I don't remember because, like, you know, as I said before, one of my main one of my main issues with the game is that. They give you all the story as you're playing, and if you keep dying, you're going to get to the point where you just want to focus on getting past it, so everything else becomes white noise. So now when I play and there's story, I kind of like wait for it to finish, and then I do what I have to do. So the story that I... So I got so far in it that... I don't want to spoil necessarily the area, but it just... It felt kind of very twisted about where I'm at and it's like oh shit this is like really it gets really interesting just visually um, because you go to a different like, location completely I personally don't care too much about the spoilers is it like oh, okay. so I thought it was kind of interesting uh, how you end up like in a computer or some shit after you save that guy from his jail cell or whatever oh like, yeah like that He's like, you're in your software now or something, and you're, like, walking through this world. And it's, like, basically, it's not really gameplay. It's, like, you're walking around. You can fall in pits, but it's not yeah. very difficult. It gives you, like, light puzzles. And it also, like, you'll see those yeah. kind of worlds more often. Like, not more, not more, but they, they're they used to, like, to, to show you, like, new abilities you'll be getting. So, yeah. like, the last ability you'll get is a mind control kind of move so you get to hack other people and have them like kill other enemies for you for a while but um but since you don't care about spoilers the area that i was talking about like it gets all like resident evil almost because you go to these like abandoned lab and during this like the architect starts talking like yeah mars has been trying to get rid of humanity and just move everyone to be like a uh, hybrid of like some cyborg organism kind of thing and the more like and the story is like now it's getting to this point where Mars like trying to t like talking is like I find it very weird that you decided to take the distress call of this one woman. You should have just gone straight to me. Why are you going over there? Something's really weird about this. So then the architect just cuts her off and is like, "You don't need to listen to her anymore." And he's just like, "So you can hack their their computers? You lied to me." It's like I don't don't worry about. It. You'll understand later on. <laughs> Oh, he's uh, full of shit. So yeah. He probably right from the beginning. He's, he's, that guy's not good, right? Yeah, he's, he's just the whole game, like, he's just hiding something because he's telling you to ignore the distress signal. Like, he's like, God, oh, why are you going after Zoe? She's just a lesser being. I mean, you're, you're cool. I mean, you don't need to worry about her. So I'm just like, this guy is probably going to be like, kill Mara, then take her place. And be like, oh, now we're going to get the real ball going. Yeah. So it sounds like Mara is the resistance, maybe, but is Mara the doc Dr. Octopus lady? Yeah. That's she, in the, the Yeah, she's not in the resistance. She's she like controls the city. 
It's just uh, okay. the person you're talking to that that you're trying to help out is Zoe. Oh, that's her. That's her name. Oh right, right. Yeah, it's, but it's, you haven't met her yet. Not in person, but she's t- she. You meet her like when she's like talking about like the air purification. Uh, fans. Wait, huh. How many hours into the game are you? Are like how how many levels? Uh, I I I think. Oh man, I lost I lost count. I feel like I I I would like to say like thirteen levels, but what? I don't know. Like I feel like I'm I have to be like roughly ten hours in or so. It, it's just funny because yeah, you you must be way further than I am, right? Because I've only beaten two levels. Oh um, yeah, yeah. But I just heard from this woman, Zoe, right? Yeah. They spend that much of the game going trying to find. I thought she was gonna just show up right after that. No, you don't see anyone. Pretty much, you're just you, like. I guess that's like the the only the other thing is that like you don't really see any of these people, so there's no face to put the names to. You only really get to see Mara, but I mean that's in the intro, and then that's and that's pretty much all you see. You don't really see anything else. Uh, so I, I, you're gonna end up fighting her though, right? Yeah, yeah, you so I mean, you're probably gonna see her at, like, in the cutscene and then at the end, but you're probably not, but that's pretty much all you're gonna see. I don't think you see anyone else. So weird. Yeah, and that is, like, one of the weird things, they keep talking about this resistance, and it's like, you know, you never see them, you don't know what they're, what they're doing, like, what are they doing in, in the scope of the world, but, I... So it's that, but I also wonder if there's gonna be a twist because there's a, another part of the story where the architect starts, starts talking to you like you're this ultimate being or something like he starts saying like that he's one of Mara's test subjects that like she, she was trying to test on all these other ghost runners that she was trying to run by and all this stuff and it's like the way that his operating system works and the way that he interacts with architect is so unique. So something with that is is like different from everyone else that wants that makes Mara want to get like more to get more information from him it's it's so weird because is this architect person like I, I'm starting to wonder is like the whole game happening in this like person's head like the like because they did say something about there's like several ghost runners but you don't see anyone else right you do You're, like see, the last one apparently you do see one or another one uh, so this, okay, so this is what I, okay, so this part got me really excited to talk about, about it, because, uh, oh, well, let's talk about it. Later on, you, you see this one samurai show up, and the architect just tells you, oh, that's your, your other you, this, uh, pretty much insane to me that this is another ghost runner that's just running around that's like your body double, whatever, and it's like, okay, this is the, this other person you're chasing, you go off this train to fight her, and this boss fight is... It's one of my favorite boss fights because you die in one hit, but you have to like whittle her. Um, she has two health bars. One is her normal health. The other one is you have to like parry her attacks exactly, and then if, for that to be depleted. But if you like attack too early, if you fuck up, it just replenishes fully. So it's just this big like game of parrying, pretty much until you until she uh, drops her guard, and then you get a swipe her. She jumps to another platform. You have to like maneuver around her projectiles to get to her, but it gets so like close and intense each each time you try to close the gap between between you two, and just mm. a lot. Just the pairing of it is just it's it's one of those like they teach you a pattern to like look at because if you it's pretty much like you have to wait until like the very end of her attack for her t- for you to um parry to do a perfect parry on it. If you do too early. It it just re- it just restarts the fight pretty much, but uh, that that part has got me really in love with just the swordplay of it. And after that, like everything else just start start falling to pl- into place. Like they have these other enemy types that are just other samurais. They have to do like perfect parry on those for before you can kill them. And after that, it's like okay, I can do a decent job whittling them down. Before it was just if I see them, I'll just use one of my abilities to just insta kill them and then move on. Now it's like, all right, I could just get them by themselves and just do a perfect parry and kill them. But now it's so, it is insane with, with, their, with a throw because he introduced this new enemy type that is a uh, walking bomb and they just kind of run up to you and you can't really kill them. You have to like, 
so you have to like walk back and wait for them to explode, or you have to use one of your other abilities to get to them. But there's so many, and they wall, they walk on the walls. They just go, they just swarm you. But uh, it's so it's that, and then they start throwing more and more enemies in in concentrated areas. Like there's these, they put like five gunmen on one little platform, and it's like okay, I have to like, and they all shoot at different times. And I try yeah. to hack one to kill the others, and if they're not facing the other enemies, they don't kill the other enemies, so they just kind of chill there. But the other thing is that if you hack someone, the other enemies will kill the one you hacked automatically. So they already know that that dude is hacked, they'll just kill him, so they don't have to worry about him. So it's it's uh, kind uh, of a fun, like, ha- like um, you could pit them all against each other pretty much and see what happens. This this game is becoming more stealth bastard than I thought. Yeah. Because now it's becoming like puzzles where it's like you have to do the right placement of things and then you kind of move around that, right? Well, there's no like, there's no right or wrong, but it is well, like that's what I was gonna say. Is it's it's you sounds like you can be more creative. Yeah, it's it's exactly what I wanted stealth bastard to be. Just like yeah, giving that and having you do what what you whatever you want. Then they throw these one other enemy that is, that is one of my favorite enemies. These enemies like kind of like teleport to different areas. You can kind of see where they're going because they leave like a purple trail to where they're going, mm-hmm. and they uh, send out like a slicing projectile. Uh, but they like they, they teleport immediately after they're done with that attack. So you have to like attack them either right before or right after they do that attack. So you have to like kind of know where they're going and just time your speed enough with it and those are the most satisfying kills in the game every other enemy is like okay this is satisfying but these these enemies i don't know why but every time i kill kill them it's like i just get like a surge of like hell yeah finally and then it just goes on to the next one it's just this game just gets all this adrenaline pumping it's the and how Amy kind of gets that when i play it but this game just amps that up to like 11 Every time you do a successful run. Even if you die, it's like, fuck it, I'm just going to keep going and see what I can do differently. Well, the third dimension makes it a little bit more interesting, right? Because it's like you can go over or, like, through. Like, you don't have to think just in terms of, like, what can be seen in the four walls, right? So you can do a little bit more interesting things, like... And, like, the momentum mechanics are kind of cool, like... You can do a lot of cool things with sliding and stuff and, like, picking up speed to make it easier to breeze through the levels. So it's, like, people who are probably really good at this game make it look really cool, I bet. Like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. the videos I've seen of this game almost sold me on it just off that alone when I first watched it. I was like, oh, this looks so cool. But then I saw, like, people were dying in one hit and I was like, oh, I, I don't know if this is for me. Because, like... Hello oh, Miami is one thing because it's like at least I could see the uh, layout and I could kind of plan around that. This is like first person. And it's like ah, someone's gonna come from behind. It's gonna be some bullshit, which, which still kind of happens because it, I there are just times where I try to pivot around a projectile and it still counts. And it's like that, unless this dude is like a block, I don't. I kind of don't understand how it's hitting me half the time because I feel like I should be avoiding some of these projectiles, but it's just. It must be some spacing issue that I'm just not uh, thinking of. Yeah, I, I'm not as experienced with the game, obviously, yet. Yeah. So I can't say for sure, but, like, <laughs> it does suck when you have a blind spot and you didn't know an enemy was somewhere, and then you just, like, hear a shot, and you're like, uh-oh, I'm fucked. And you have no idea how to, blo- like, uh, dodge it or anything. Yeah, um, I, I just can't wait to see... Like, what? how are you going to handle the uh, level of the gatekeeper, which is this big tower of a uh, boss? You have to, because you have to climb up to the top to chop, chop off, like, three of its wires. But you have to do it, like, three times, so the first time it's, like, you're just going up a simple platform with just simple lasers. And then, after that, the second time you go all the way from the bottom of the of the room. And as you're going up, it sends other, like, shockwaves around the wall. So if you're running on the wall, you have to jump... So that whole level, that whole boss fight, I was just thinking, I died like 700 times in that fight, thinking, oh, I think this is going to be it for me. This might be the end. And I beat it, but yeah. I'm just sitting there wondering, like, <laughs> uh, how that's, how that's going to... That that I'm excited because I think at, at that point, that is kind of like a skill check, I think. I think if you beat that, everything else will be, like, decent. 
Yeah, I, I like I said, I think I've gotten the hang of the game. And tell me if this makes sense to you, because this is kind of how I feel about it. I At first, I thought, like, remember when in the beginning when I was saying, like, well, it's first person and you have to be way too precise? I think I realized that you just need to be precise with your timing, not as much with your placement, if that makes any sense. Yeah. It's like pressing the buttons at the right time is more important than, like, really... Because I, I, like, I thought I had to jump, like, I, I, was, I was being too fidgety with how I was playing. But it's like, really, you just have to, like, jump on a wall and then jump off the wall at the right time. And then, like, turn the camera at the right time. And it's like, you kind of will make do there. You don't have to be as, like, super precise with your placement. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's how I'm feeling. I, th- I think there is a level of kind of like forgiveness of it like it's kind of like how they do auto aim in most first person shoes for consoles like they have like a general range and i think it's like not necessarily like super forgiving where it's like okay you have like you could miss it entirely but they give you enough of a window where you don't have to be like super precise but it it can be like enough where you like you can do it like if you know what you're doing you're gonna be able to do it fine but there's all the only one that i i don't quite get is the is deflecting the projectiles with your sword. I don't remember if that's like a ability you get later on, or if it's an, or if it's one of the skills that you have to like equip. But uh, that one, I just have always every time it happens, it's either I do it too late, too early, or it's like it's hitting my fingers and then I die. It's like it's to the point where I'm just like I'm just not gonna bother with this. I'll just mind control them, or I'll just like push them off the edge or or whatever. Yeah. But, but the you gotta tell me the- how you got used to the. I don't know how to explain this, but like the momentum of the dash. Like sometimes I'll press dash, and I'll accidentally like pitch the camera, but I really wanted to go forward. You know what I mean? Like, but, like you're moving the camera instead. Trouble- yeah, and, and then he'll like it'll be like he's dodging, like strafe dodging. And I don't know how to correct that. Like, you can't press forward. So I don't know how to oh. fix it so he dashes forward. You know what I mean? Because He's... I have the opposite. I keep dashing forward. I can't, I can't strafe with it. Yeah, because... I, I, like, every time I'm trying to do a dash to a wall, I strafe dodge by accident. And oh. then I'm not going straight anymore. Are you tapping the left bumper or are you holding it down? Oh, I'm just supposed to tap it? Yeah, if you tap it. I think it, you oh, can well, just dash in a direction. You, you there's, there's my answer. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, if you hold it down, it's more like you could kind of position yourself a little bit better, which I don't do okay. because I end up falling off as I'm doing it. So it's like, I don't want to waste my time with that. Okay, that's interesting. Because I, I was at first confused with like the modality of the dash because I was like, how does it know that I'm trying to dodge a bullet. I, I thought, like, it, it was aware of when you dodge a bullet, but it's what you're saying. If you tap it, you just go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. I'm going to have to get used to that because I, I keep, like, accident. Like, sometimes it works because it is helpful if you want to, like, position yourself. Like, even if, like, I've used it a few times to just get higher up, like, I'll hold it, pitch myself up, and then I'll dash forward. And it works, but sometimes I'll strafe, and then you kind of dash to the right instead. Oh, okay. And it's not exactly what I want to do. But yeah, so I'm going to try to tap. Yeah, tapping is... I mean, I think it's like if you tap forward, you can go forward, you can tap to the left or tap to the right. I think if you tap, it's just a quick dash, so it does it kind of immediate, but uh, if you hold it down, it's more... more oh. Which, another thing I don't get is, like, there's a meter attached to it, and is it just every time you press it, it just has to recover. I don't really get that either. Yeah, I, I, th- if you press it once to do the dash, that counts as as you're using it. So you have to wait for it to recharge, uh, etc. So there is so, like if you do it two times, you'll have to wait until it recharges. There's no there's no visual meter for it, but it it. Re- I don't know because I also equipped like a thing that makes it uh, recharge very quickly, so I don't really have to deal with um with long wait times. So it's like it gets. It recharges pretty fast. The uh, the skill the skill menu is pretty good. It's as I said before. It's like Resident Evil Four's uh, briefcase, where you're just kind of putting Tetris blocks uh, in, mm-hmm. and you see how much you can fit. And you get more. 
they open more and more as you continue the game and they give you more skills. But I don't know if they give you the full range of the whole thing just yet because I still have some blocks that are like grayed out. So I have to like still put some around. I can't put the whole thing or or whatever. Which is like I'm just waiting for that for it to happen so I can just put more more skills in because it's uh, there's like f five skills that I would love to have, but it's like I can only have like three or four, and it's like I have to really think what I want to use. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wish I could contribute to this conversation, but I have not gotten that far. Like, like I said, I've only beaten two levels. <laughs> yeah, well, um, well, I was, I was uh, and, not expecting much because it was also a Memorial Day weekend. So there, there must have been like, you know, people do stuff on that weekend too. So yeah, and I actually was down in Connecticut for like I was only there for two days. Long story, I'll tell you after, but um. I came, I was gonna I was gonna ask you to hang out and I literally went back up to Boston Saturday morning. So I came Thursday, uh, I was there Friday, and I just went back up to Boston Saturday morning. I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> um But yeah, um yeah, I definitely didn't play video games. I, I definitely uh took advantage of the fact that we could go out and stuff now. So I went to the bars a couple days and then I was recovering on Monday. <laughs> uh, man, that's Did you do anything special? I mean no, no, it was not... shitty weather. I'm assuming you streamed a lot, huh? Yeah. So, I was talking about SMT three uh, before as well, saying like how there's Dante in it. I finally know why Dante's in the game. Like story wise, okay. he's just there to kill demons, whatever. But the main reason why he was they put him in the game. So Capcom and Atlas had this had this uh, deal, this collaboration that they were doing. So Capcom was pretty much like, look, we'll. You can use Dante in your in your game for SMT three for the PS two, but you have to design Dante and Virgil's Devil Triggers for Devil May Cry three. So they put Dante in the game and they got and they designed uh, Devil Triggers for for Devil May Cry three. So I thought that That's was cool. Yeah, that was a cool like cool up that you know never happened before. <laughs> it was like oh sweet, and then and that, but yeah. this time it's like yeah you have to pay for the licensing the licensing fee this time, but uh. It's still like a nice say, addition. Wait, go ahead. Oh, it's a nice addition to at least have it have it there. But uh it's only like five dollars for for the DLC, which is fine, but wait a second. Was it DLC in the original? No. Because these pieces it Well well listen, it's like that was two thousand three or whatever. Don't they made a deal them. back then. Like you know, this is different don't now. <laughs> Stop defending them, because it's bullshit. They should just put it in the game. God damn it. They got to make these fucking licenses in perpetuity. Like, how much was it just like an Easter egg or like a side quest thing? Or was it like he was a part of the story originally? Or was he, oh, he was a guy, he was one of the, like the, the personas or whatever. No, he's a boss fight. Like, he's, oh. like, he has lines. Like, he has, like, it's, it's so weird because... Everything like so, even in this game, when you buy when you buy the uh, the remaster, there's like new game. If you buy the DLC with Dante, that's just called Maniacs. So Maniacs has its own like thing almost, like different music. There's some, it might have some different balancing with it, but the other thing is that the story throws in Dante in this other character's place. They interchange him with another one with another character that's similar kind of premise. Oh, I don't know the, I don't know, like, what, the other one, the one that he replaces is, like, Rado, which I don't know necessarily his story, so I don't know how different they change it, but in SMT3, the first time you see Dante, you just see his boot, just walk up, and he's like, the, I'm taking all these weird, at, these weird jobs, that, what the fuck, like, he's just kind of like this thing, whatever, time to kill demons, whatever, paycheck's a paycheck, but, uh, I don't know how he necessarily ties, the only thing is that, it did kind of make sense in the sense of there being demons, because instead of like shadows or personas, you're just literally fighting demons in, in this game. And I think that's like the other thing I like about SMT3 way more is it doesn't have this bullshit of like, oh, oh these teenagers find this magical world and they fuck around for a bit and, and they find out things about it. Like, this is like more interesting because that it starts off with you getting off a train you're meeting with your friends and you're like oh we're gonna meet our teacher at the, at the park 
oh, our teacher is actually, like, she's in the hospital because she's sick or something. We should see her. They, they go to the hospital. They find out the teacher wasn't sick. The teacher was part of this cult that was trying to remake the world or whatever. So they destroy the world. They destroy... They, everyone dies. Her, her teacher named Dominique. Did she make a new castle or something? <laughs> oh, she... <laughs> She pretty much made it into Japan. Like, the whole country okay, changes. Okay. Like, it, it kind of, like, made everything more, like, sp- like a sphere. Whatever. But yeah. there's, they were talking about, like, the conception and all this stuff. And this, <laughs> she just tells you, if you want to, if you really want to know why I, I'm doing this, you meet me, meet me here. I'll explain everything when you get there. And then, and then, like, you die. But you get brought, you're, you're turned into a demon. You become, like, this god demon thing that is prophesized to be this got a creation or destruction like you either destroy the world or create the world wait you said you die and become a god yeah like as you're dying because like during this conception that's going on everyone pretty much dies they turn into a spirit or whatever as this is happening this boy this little kid and and his mom or whoever like come up to you is like all right we're gonna give you this this power I, I think it's called like a, a um Magatama. We'll give you this and this will give this will grant you like godlike powers. Like you can just do whatever the fuck you want. And after you get that, you start talking to like other demons and these spirits, they keep talking about how your character looks like this prophesized person to either create the world anew or destroy the world. Like it's about god it's about God and destruction and creation, all that all that bullshit, but it doesn't have this like day and night cycle. There's no social links. It's just you're you're going around and you're fighting demons as you're like trying to find like where you're where you're supposed to go. It's it is so weird, but it's it it really feels like a Suda Fifty One game. Like just in the style, like the characters look like they're from a Suda Fifty One game. Like the the little boy you meet, I keep thinking he's um that old ass character in Killer Seven. That's in the wheelchair all the time. Oh. Like, it just uh, re- makes me think of that. Armin is his name, is it? I think Armin so. Armin Smith? Yeah. <coughs> but, um... I do like that it... The, uh... The turn system is so bizarre. And the game doesn't really teach you anything. The game does it lets you... Cuts you loose. And it's like, you're just gonna learn by just by playing. So, it got to the point where it's like, all just, um turbo through like fights so i just put it on auto i was like okay whatever now thinking about it they give you this one boss fight where that boss fight requires you to learn the whole system during this fight because uh you're fighting the the uh demon is like the matador so he has this ability where it it insanely buffs his evade his attack and his defense and he gets stacked that like up to like five times and you can also stack debuffs, you can stack buffs, whatever. Like, Persona doesn't do that at all. Like, the most they let you do, I don't think they did this in Golden, but you could extend the duration. But in SMT3, you could just either make it so that you could just have a high-ass attack range, like, you just keep uh, stacking it to be, like, just, like, a god. Or you could just keep uh, lowering your evade so you can't, so you can't miss or whatever. So this... This boss just does that, so every time you try to attack, you miss. And if you, so, they give you like four icons to re- to represent a turn. So if you miss, you it takes two turns from you. So if you just fuck around and keep trying to attack the matador, you're just gonna miss out on like a full turn cycle. So like you have like four party members and you miss on one character, only three people, or only two other people are gonna get their turn. But you could also pass and gain a half turn. The, the turn system is is really hard to explain, but it makes sense once you like see it in action. I gotta say, it sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Cause yeah. like that was my main complaint about Persona. I was like very excited to play a JRPG, but it's like the most fucking dead simple system ever, and it's like, like it's like oh, you could pump up the difficulty, difficulty. But it doesn't make the mechanics more fun. It's like, just stun them and then group attack them. It's like, whatever. Yeah. Like, this stinks. And whatever I, the hell's going on here sounds interesting. Yeah, because like, <laughs> there, is a, there is a little bit more of a strategy with 
who you, because if you pass, you don't waste a full turn, so you can like get yeah. five turns pretty much by just passing. But uh, mm-hmm. it's just it's nice like the game doesn't teach you how the turn system works. They never explain it. They the only thing they might explain is uh fusing. They do explain how to fuse your demons, but they don't. But that's pretty much it. The other thing that's interesting is that there is a a mechanic that ties into the moon cycle. So if you have like a full moon, you could you could have like higher higher skilled demons to fuse. If it's like a new moon, it's it might be worse. Oh, uh, that also plays into negotiations. If you want to get like someone to join your party, if it's a full moon, it might be very easy to get them to join you. But if it's a new moon, they might just say like, "Nah, fuck you." Like they. What year did this game come out? Came out. I I would like to say two thousand three, maybe two thousand four. It's an you old PS two era game. I was going to say, it might be early enough. Now, this would be more likely with, like, very early PS2 era or PlayStation era. But they probably don't explain anything because you're supposed to read the manual. Yeah, probably. <laughs> the, uh... and, 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 like, it's actually refreshing that it sounds like they didn't make it tutorialized for, like, the modern era. Yeah, like, there's things in the game that... A lot of people, a lot of people may not like it because it just feels like some of the way that things are are designed is just out of spite. Like it is so, like the negotiations of it just feel like that someone just made these negotiations just to like fuck you over because you could just sit there and be like, "All right, this this demon you really want, he wants like you talk to him, okay? Oh, you want to talk to me? Okay, well, if you want me to join your team, give me a thousand coins." You, yeah, you kept asking you. For- and you just kept giving it to him, and he's like, actually, go fuck yourself. Yeah, and it's bullshit. I, I did everything I wanted, and I was like, no, and there's no reason for it. It's all RNG, with just how that works. And the one that pissed me off the most was, this, after all this shit it put me through, it asked me a question of like, oh, so what do you think of flowers? And the options were like, no, or like, I don't care about flowers, or yeah, flower power. I was like, has the flower power. That was like it's so like drastically different from the other option. Picked it. <laughs> oh, you you said flower power? Yeah, you're a loser. Get out of here. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then That's they can awesome. just attack you, too. The other thing is that uh the random encounters, I I love how like it, it just shows up sometimes, but if you're just in a pinch and you just need to get to somewhere very quickly, you have no time to heal. That could just fuck your run up because there's I got one demon, and I started having like all, and I, yeah, this fight started. I, I was low on health and all this stuff, and then someone in my chat was like, "Yeah, you you didn't you didn't save, uh, before you got the demon after you got the demon." I was like, "Oh god damn it!" <laughs> I was like, and I was like, I got I got like rush through it, and they keep summoning other demons as well. The other thing is that they throw the most at you too. Like there's this one time I was like trying to gun, I was trying to like either level up or gun into the save, whatever. It showed like six enemies, and they all had my weakness. And I was like, oh, because if you land a weakness, it it gives them another turn, pretty much for another for someone else. So they can just keep landing weaknesses amongst your party just down the chain of enemies that they have the right skills they can just keep going if they if they really want to but uh it it's interesting like like the way that the combat works is so fascinating to me like it kind of makes me think of like fa- how much i'm like admiring final fantasy 8 it's just it has all this charm like put into it that i just i just love like and after that matador fight i left th- saying to myself like the challenge of that fight, it was so much fun to overcome that I I know there's going to be harder enemies after it, but it's like this, that challenge of just trying to persevere was like actually like fun to, to overcome, uh, which I don't, yeah like, I like a good challenge, but if it's like so much challenge where it's like I have to do so much like work and it's, it's so much like stress, I just kind of like just back off and just either don't play it again or whatever, but this is the one game where it's like I could just... If I need to grind, I'll just grind. It's because like even just the smaller fights just seem fu- more fun to fight than like you know how the fights of Persona Four just are bullshit anyway. Like it just it, and that's what I was gonna say is and what you just described with like the save points and all that. 
is exactly the anxiety that's completely missing from like Persona because it's like, eh, I'll just leave the dungeon whatever the fuck I want with this spell. And like there's no penalty really for it. It's like you you have to save, otherwise you fucked yourself. Yeah. And it's like so there's te- there's actual tension of like a battle might come out of nowhere and they might kill me and I might have to do all this over again. Yeah. Where it's like and for like, I'll just run away and then I'll just leave. And it's like there's no there's no like drama or anything. It's yeah. like, like whatever. The other thing is that like and I think this is also why, like, this game also made me love Persona 5 even more, because Persona 5 kind of does, it kind of uses the same mechanic that SMT3 does with recruiting of Personas. You have to negotiate with them for them to join your party. Otherwise, you know, they're either going to leave, they might get mad, and you have to fight them again, whatever. And even then, like, you have to, like, run to a save point in in the palace to either save, whatever. So there's... It does a better job getting you, like, to be, like, more, like, okay. Like, sure, you can still see enemies around and you can sneak around them, whatever, but the fact that you can't get Personas through shuffle time, it's, like, it makes the it makes the combat more, like, do I want to, like, knock them all down so I can negotiate with them for them to join my team or just kill them? Oh, it's like Pokemon in a way, where you have to, like, catch them. Yeah, like, in... In Persona Five, it's like that because you have to, because in yeah. order for you to, for them to join your team, you have to like knock them out, like you have to land their weakness or a critical, whichever one you can do, and then you have to negotiate with them. Uh, sometimes you might not be able to because they might be high level, they might not whatever. Well, SMT three, yeah, it's, just... it's just it's, and I love like a lot of people are also like saying like you the conversation skills you get are bullshit as well. Like that those just take slots. But I always like to keep just one to seduce an enemy from each in each party member. Like you get instead of like having like human party members, you have demons as your party members, which I like way more because it's just it's way more like meaningful to see these demons. Like they they talk to you. You might you might see them like roaming around as well. Like it's it it's more like it's more thoughtful of seeing these demons than in Persona where they're just more like dispendable. It's like oh okay like oh Jack Frost okay yeah. throw throw him away fuck him. Yeah, it really means nothing. Really, yeah. it's like they're just slots for abilities. Really, at yeah. The end of the day. And with this, it's like more like you get like you get a pixie at the beginning. That's like the first demon you get, and this pixie just tells you like, "Look, I need to leave this hospital. You need to take me to this park where these other pixies are, and then I'll leave." And it's like, "Okay, whatever. We'll do this." You go to the park, and then the pixie's like, "Well, I I could leave here." And it's like you could either tell her to, to leave or to stay. And so it's like, like it, you should tell her to stay because it, it contributes to the ending that you get as well in the ending. Like, if she leaves, it changes the ending for you. There's six endings Wait a second. in that game. That's really, that's actually really interesting. Um, is it, is it meaningful to, to like let them do their thing though? Like, someone said that it makes a difference for your ending, but like, does it? I, I don't know. Have because, any other? Because I don't know necessarily like, because it, it was like it was like some secret to keep Pixie around, but I don't know like what that secret entails. I don't. I I think it's the ending. I don't even know if it is, but I think it is the ending. But it's just the play this. Yeah, this game has a lot of weird checks and balances because it also the way you play also changes your character as well. Like there is like a weird karma system integrated with it as well. Like depending on how you play, it will also affect the ending. Like if you're more violent. That that affects something. If you're like more passive, you keep like it's it's so bizarre. Like, and throughout the times that you're leveling up, the game just says, "Hey, this thing is raging inside of you. Do you let it continue?" And it's like, yeah, yeah, sure. All right, okay. you got poisoned. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, okay. This is really interesting. I might have to play this one. Yeah, and the, this sounds like a way better version of Persona. <laughs> yeah, it's. I'm like it way more because you also get these. So the thing that, like, the the um, Magtamas that you get, that they, they first get in the beginning of the game is like, oh, you get, like, basic skills. You can buy more, and that changes what skills you get as well. It changes your affinities and all this stuff. So you might get one that's, like, nu- um, that nullifies one attack, that but weak to another, or might drain, whatever. Uh, but those, like, you have to find in stores on your own or whatever, which... Which I like, because I hated, like, the idea of shifting through personas and having to, like, rem- to memorize which persona has the affinity you need. 
oh, you have a full a full party. You need to go back to your compendium, look which one you have, whatever. All this stuff to keep track of. While with this, it's like you have one centralized menu for all these skills that you can see what's weak to and whatever. So it's a little more like organized on what you know what you want to equip with. And you can also, like, change your build as well. Like, you could increase your strength, your magic, your agility on your own. So there's a level of customization with your leveling as well. Yeah, I might have to check this out. This actually sounds interesting. Even though I got burned with Persona because I fucking hate it. Well, Persona 4, I fucking hate. But maybe I'll try this. This actually sounds super interesting. Yeah, um, I think I think you'd like subject. this one. Huh? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I, 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 think, I, was... I think you'd like it, but... Yeah, what you're describing sounds really fun. Um, you wa- you watched the Castlevania show? Yeah, I finished. I finished the last season. Like, like the newest two, one. That yeah, the, the last one. Yeah, season four. I haven't I haven't started it yet. Um, but I really want to watch it. Um, but I'm trying to think of what happened at the end of season three because I don't remember. Season three, I don't I don't like it that much. Really? But uh. It, so they meet. So Belmont meets that. The, Mel, Belmont and Sifa meet that guy. That's like, oh, I need to go to these this infinite portal, whatever the fuck, these infinite doors, whatever. They find this like this cult that was doing all this fucked up shit with demons, whatever. And in order for them to kill the last demon, they had to like send him into like the infinite door. So that that infinite door guy was like, I'll stay here. I'm trying to find my wife. I'm gonna stay here, okay, guys. And then that was pretty much it. Season and, three? Yeah, season three. And then, Can I like... Watch this? Wait a second. Did Dracula die in season two? Yeah. Wait a fucking... I don't know if I watched season three yet. No. <laughs> I don't think you have, because season three is so... Wait, wait, wait. So wait, bizarre. Wait. Is, is season three... Okay. Season three is where... No, I had to have watched it. I just who was like the antagonist in it because I remember because that dude that like can turn things into like demons he like controls like monsters yeah who gets like Dracula banishes him to a des- desert before he gets killed right yeah so that guy's roaming around and then isn't it like Dracula's lieutenant lieutenants are the are the, like the bad guys of season three yeah season three and season four like but. This is what's bullshit about about that, though. Like, they get no... Like, okay, season three, like, builds up Carmilla and Lenore and the other vampire people as well. Like, oh, yeah, Dracula sucks. These are going to be the, the the next threat, whatever. And they keep building up, like, yeah, we're going to, like, fence in all these humans. This is going to be fucking badass. We're going to, like, take over the world. Yeah, we are. Yeah, fuck yeah, whatever. We got to get Hector to make demons for us. Yeah, we should we should do that. Right. And then, like, in season four, it's, like, the second episode. Yeah, I think this is a bad idea. Maybe we shouldn't have listened to Carmilla. Yeah, that is, it's a pretty bad idea. Maybe we should go back. Yeah, maybe we should. It's, like, what was the point? Wait, I, I thought I watched season three, but maybe I didn't. Because I don't remember this door. Does Is Alucard with them? No, Alucard the stayed at the castle. And then he finds these two other people, and these two other people have, like, a threesome, and... Yeah, and he kills them, right? Yeah. Okay, I definitely watched this, but why don't I remember shit? Because season three sucks. I I do not like that season. It is so... It was so fucking dull. It was just nothing but just... Talking about shit I didn't care about the char- like the infinite door premise was boring as fuck as well. It's like I don't give a shit about these infinite doors. Like, wh- but it can. Okay. Tr- oh man, it's just you. You know what I? You know what I do remember about the season? And maybe you're right. Maybe it did kind of suck because I remember you could tell when the animation budget ran out. Yeah. At the end. Yeah, the that last fight like- scene. Yeah. <laughs> I Dude, that. it looked like hell. Yeah, like, and it the whole show, even in the fourth season, it just feels like they wrote this show to be two seasons. And then as they were wrapping up season two, Netflix was like, "Look, you need to do two more seasons. This show is great. You should keep doing it." And they're like, oh, "Okay, we'll we'll do two more seasons." And then they just kind of tacked on, and then Hector 
goes with Carmilla, and then Carmilla's like, surprise, I'm I'm actually going to use you to make demons. And it's like, really? Yeah, this she is... slaps him, and he's like, oh, right, that's Yeah, right. and I fucking, and after that, I hated fucking Hector the whole time. Season three just kept making me hate him. Every time, like, so Lenore, this other vampire, kept checking, checking in on him, he's like, yeah, she's just tricking you, Hector. And Hector's like, yeah, you're stupid. Yeah, fuck you. I'm not listening to you. Yeah, you're stupid. Whatever. Fuck this. I'm just, I know what you're up to. I'm just going to do my own thing. And then Lenore just keeps fucking with him the whole time. Like, just saying, yeah, I know your place. Whatever. He lowers his guard. And then at the last minute, she's like, all right, here's a ring. Now you can't, like, disobey us. If you just, if you try to take it off, you're going to be fucked up for the rest of your being, whatever. And I was like, yeah, Hector, you fucking idiot. Why, why did you, like, take her advances the whole time? Like, it's just... It made no fucking sense. She's he's in a cage, like, like it would it may, it would have made sense, like if she was like, okay, let's get him out of the cage. You're not in the cage anymore. You're in my room or whatever. That's one thing, like whatever. But it was like she kept him in that cage and gave him like really no reason to think. Yeah, we're we're together. And then at the end of season three, he's like, you fucking tricked me, you fucking bitch. Fuck you. Season four starts, and and they're just like, oh, Lenore, you're so cute. Yeah, man. It's like, you fucking hated her in the last season. Now you're, like, flirting with her and having a good time. Like, she fucking made you a slave, and you're just like, yeah, cool. Cool, dude. Like, Yeah, you, you, it's coming back to me, and you're probably just right that this season just sucked. Because I'm thinking about it. There was a lot of, like, they built, like, this whole posse of vampires that were trying to, like turn human into cattle basically right? yeah like and then like nothing happened well it was just nothing but setup it was just, they just kept talking yeah. about it for the whole season it was like we're gonna do this yeah. yeah we are gonna do this all right next episode okay see that castle that's where we're gonna go it's like okay we, we know this and then like season four it just it's like oh yeah <laughs> screw it we don't know what to do with this all right well don't tell me i actually want to watch it um, it is. I, I do. Kind of, like, I do like season four. I do like it, but there is some things that I. It just feels like bullshit. Like the ending. I don't know. I. It just feels so fucking lame. It's so last minute. There's one twist. Season. Five. There has to be a season five. No, it's there isn't going to be a season five. Like oh, they did. Close. Yeah, th this is the final season for the show, which. Okay. Like, the, I will, to that show's credit, it does end very conclusively. Like, at least it just, it ends. But it's just, this one twist that happens in, like, an episode before the last episode. It just feels so fucking lame. Like, they try to make it, like, a big reveal. But it's like, I don't even think this was a thing in the first two seasons. It keeps insinuating it was. But it's like, I, I don't believe it. This, this sounds like fake news. Wait, don't tell me. I want to watch it because I'm gonna laugh when I see what you're talking about. Yeah. Um. Do you, okay. Am I remembering correctly that there was like, there was a bunch of like vampire crew. There was like a whole vampire crew. They don't do anything, and then they just all get killed at the end of season three. Or do they all survive? I think they all die in season two, except for like a few. Like Carmilla's group survives, right. but. The ones oh, that, like, were, like... Huh? But don't they all get killed at the end of season three? Or do they no, survive? They survive. Okay. The, okay. Uh, okay. the one thing I did like about season three, which I wish was the whole story, they had this church that was going, doing, like, shady shit. And... Oh, right? Yeah. And I was like, I like this, I like this premise. Like, everything about this, I was, like, all in on. And then it's, like... It kind of just dissolves by the end. I don't even think they resolve it. I don't... I Because I... Th no, they, I guess they did resolve it. I don't fucking remember. Because I know they... Like, because I think they tricked the priest to go to the area where he sent all these kids to die. Like, you keep telling these kids who steal food, Oh, yeah, go to that tree down there. It's going to be a cool tree. This, it's going to be fun. They go to the tree. They fall to their pit of their... To their death. There. So I, I don't remember if they sent the priest there to die or if it's like he they never really resolve it. I, I don't remember. And I have Isn't no desire to check it. Isn't that really the whole conflict is that Belmont and Sypha have to like figure out what's going on with this cult 
but they're completely distracted by this, so they can't deal with the vampire bullshit that's happening. Yeah. Isn't that the whole point? Yeah, but I'm saying, like, uh, like they see this demon, and, and they, they were talking about this, that this demon came from this infinite doorway, whatever the fuck, that, that Saint Germain, that's, that's the guy's name, Saint Germain. <laughs> Saint Germain, yeah. Yeah, he was like, oh, this monster is from the Infinite Doors. They, they summoned him. It's like, okay, they, they sent him back to the Infinite Doors, whatever. And the priest, I just don't know if they ever killed the priest or dealt with the priest or if the priest got away. Like, that's what I'm like, I don't remember. Aren't they going after him? Isn't that the whole point? I guess, I, because I... I feel like that they just they, they solved the demon and they were like, okay, we solved we solved this problem. The priest is gone. Don't worry, he's taken care of. And then he just, but I, I, I portal to huh? Is that what happens at the end? They go through a portal to find him. No, uh, I don't fucking remember. They that portal th threw in so many fucking like things now. But I think. Because I think the priest left the church because he was like, oh yeah, this is the demon, okay, later. And then he just kind of books it because he knew he was fucked. He created the demon, wasn't he? He summoned it. The demon shows up, but he just... Yeah, but then did. after that, he, I think he leaves because he's like, the demon will kill him. Or that, or like he sees that they were killing the demon and they're like, oh, I'm not going to stick around to see what happens after after the... I don't remember. It's, it's such a oh, I know. boring season. It almost got me to stop watching the show. If it wasn't for, like, hey, season four is the last season, I don't know if I would have checked it out. Yeah. Well, because all I know is the was... fucking last fight scene. Everything just looked like those fucking motion lines. You yeah, know like, about? and they kind of, like, stop, oh, and then there's, like, this. It's, like, very, yeah. like, like two frames. Uh, I think, and season four kind of has some wonky animation, too. But they, I think... I think they try to use it as in a stylistic way, so it does a better job kind of hiding it. But some scenes you can definitely tell, like, okay, this is, like, bottom of the barrel. But did you hear what happened with the uh, the guy who... I I don't know if he created the anime, the uh, series, the um, the TV series, or if he just directed some episodes or what. Uh, I think it was, like, Warren Ellis? No. I don't yeah, know that sounds name. right. Uh... He, he, I think he is the director. Yeah, he, he's something. He uh, so before season four was even announced, there was this whole thing that that came that people came forward with him. It's like, yeah, this dude was like manipulating people. He was like, it was like another like sexual harassment scandal with this dude, and it's like, oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> so like sexual deviance in Hollywood, of course. Yeah, so like I mean, so tech, I guess that that could have killed the show too, but. What's weird was during season three's run, I kept hearing like, "Yeah, they're gonna do a crossover with this show and Devil May Cry," and I was like, "What? How is that gonna work?" And I was like thinking about that, and then the whole fucking portal shows up. I was like, "Oh, let me guess. Oh, Dante's oh. gonna find this portal. He's gonna like trip into it. Whoa! And he's gonna be with Delmar yeah, or whatever." Yeah, yeah. Because there was one frame that someone uh, I felt I was in this Devil May Cry group in, on Facebook. And they showed this one frame from Castlevania's infinite doorway scene, and it had like the rebellion on a on a uh, on the wall. And it's like, oh, see the rebellion, the the sword Dante uses is right there. See, we're gonna get a crossover. But I was like, I don't think that's gonna happen. I think at most was probably gonna. I feel like it was also maybe a misunderstanding. I all I kind of feel like that they were saying they were talking about. The studio that did Castlevania would do a anime series for Devil May Cry. I think that's probably that's what, what they were saying, but I don't, I don't know. It's it, it's such an old article, and I don't even know if that's even gonna happen now. Devil May Cry series, how's it gonna cross over? Doesn't make any sense. They they go through a portal. Well, Whatever. actually, you know what? They could also do this because in Lords of Shadow Two, they go in modern day, so it it does have to be like these traditional Belmont characters that could be a bloodline of a Belmont like oh uh Jimmy Belmont meets Dante in in Don and Don't Make Cry's right. universe time timeline whatever I mean it doesn't matter I mean there's so many fucking Belmonts and shit like I don't know how many Castlevanias you've played but like a lot of the protagonists aren't Belmonts so. I've only played Lords of Shadow that was like the only big one I played I, I I've dabbled with the side-scrolling ones, but 
Lord Shadow one's like the one I've I I, I have at least beaten. Yeah. Well, fuck it. <laughs> um. So if nothing else, so I, I I need to mention that I uh. So I said, like I said, I'm gonna be. I'm not gonna be home for the next like ten days, starting Friday. So my my video game playing is gonna be hindered. However, I just I have like an eleven year old laptop that was a powerhouse in its day, and I installed Ghost Runner on it, and it runs. Oh, okay. So it'll be interesting. I'll try mouse and keyboard controls, but I'll also bring my controller, and um, I'll I'll try if I get some downtime um, while I'm away, I'll I'll still play. But if nothing else, I'll definitely watch Castlevania. So we could at least talk about Castlevania next week. Yeah. And if you beat Ghost Runner and you want to talk about it, fuck it. We'll talk about it too. <laughs> but I'll see how far I can get if I get any town time. I also want to say say this for the next game we pick. I mean, this, this is a little ahead, but... Because I was thinking, like, I think it would be... Because, like, we always have, like, a hard discussion of, like, picking what game to pick next. And I think maybe what it should it should come down to is, like, whoever picks... Like, I pick Ghost Runner, so the next next game would be your pick. And and we could talk like if, if there's like any conflicts with the games that we that we want to play, we could bring that up and we could go from there. But like we I was could... gonna say, what if I pick some piece of shit you don't want to play? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's a if, if well, if I can get it, I'll try. I'll try. Oh, nah, I'll check it out. It's not like I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm well, you see, no. I do want to try. I want to play something that's like an adventure game because I like never. I'm I'm very into like action games. But, like, I never play anything that's, like, Zelda-ish or anything like that. Which is, like, what mm. I'm kind of, I like, because I would never play it on my own. So I'm trying to figure out something like that. Um, but we'll think about it. We'll talk about it later. I, I do, um, I think I do have a game in mind. For, I'll have to, like, make sure I, I'm right in saying this. Because, like, I, I started playing this game called Cross Code. That is kind of like an adventure game. Like there's some puzzle aspects to it, but like there's combat, but it has like a lot of like a, like um it's kind of like open world as well. Like it kind of merges like MMO kind of gameplay with a single player aspect to it, but it's like a very interesting like sprite game. Yeah, but, uh, like I just want to play something that I wouldn't play, but also, but maybe I should play the angle of getting you to play something you don't like, don't play, because I can see that you're becoming a JRPG fan. Yeah. So maybe I can find one for both of us to play. Yeah, because, because... Persona 5, obviously. Yeah, fuck that. Well, actually, we'll you know see. what? It was actually Persona 5, yeah, because that was the first JRPG I actually beat. <laughs> I never Fair beat any enough. other one, so that did get me into it. You gotta start somewhere, but eventually you'll play good games. Hey, Persona 5 is a great <laughs> game. It's better than 4. I played 4, it's... Oh! I had to tell you this, because I was thinking... I was, <laughs> I was thinking about this... Because I got further in four, and we were talking about Adachi, and I, I get, so, because you don't care about the fucking spoilers for, for Persona 4, so I, yeah. I could tell you because this, the whole reasoning for why Adachi was, was the murderer is, it is so fucking all over the place. So... He starts off by saying, like, he, because they, they, they approach him, like, oh, why did he kill all these people and, and all that? It's like, well, you see, the first the first one, that reporter lady or whatever, was it the reporter or, or Saki, whatever. Yeah, I was, like, talking to her. She, I was flirting with her. She kept rejecting me, so threw her in the TV. I was like, this dude just killed me. <laughs> he killed her because he, he starts killing people because they didn't, like, accept his advances. And I was like... This is why this is this is why he does it. Girls, yeah, like Saki was another one where like because Saki was like talking about like how she met the reporter. She's like, yeah, you know, so wh why don't you like me? And he's like, what? Yeah, you bitches. He never look at me and never talk to me. Like he's pretty much an incel the whole time, the whole game. He's like the incel of that game. The and then, like, he, they also ask, like, why did you interfere with the investigation? Like, why did you try to, like, throw the police off or whatever? He's like, well, I like the cat and mouse game of the police. I love, like, having someone else being the suspect and having the police go after him and all this stuff. So he was pitting the police and the detective unit against each other pretty much the whole time. Just seeing, like, 
which one will go after the subjects that he's like kind of like throwing at them. So like he made that that uh high schooler like take the blame for the murder. He's like, yeah, go after him. He's he did it. So he wants to like. Did that, kid, did that kid kill that guy or no? He killed uh King Moron, but that's all he did. He didn't do anything else. Thing that just side note that when they. They still call him King Moron after he gets brutally murdered. Well, He's I completely... call him King Moron. I'll, I'll never, I never, I never liked him, no matter what. And him being dead doesn't make that. I mean, even doesn't if change that. A guy in real life that I fucking hated, and he got fucking killed. I wouldn't disrespect him like that. Even if, it's like you have to really hate someone to well, disrespect this... someone that was dead like that. Well, this dude like kept insinuating all the students were rapists. So I mean, it all, it all. And actually, so uh, fair enough. <laughs> 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 but, uh, I don't know, like, that, but I was just saying, I was, like, just saying that, like, I, I did like that he, he wanted to pit the police and, and the t- detective unit, like, against each other doing that shit, like, that, that's, like, a, like, a lunacy that I kind of, like, enjoy, but just, just the, re- I forgot, I thought the reason he was killing these people was, like, the reporter lady was, like, his mom, like, a love child, like, he was, like, a love child with the, uh, the, the, uh, government official guy, and he was just, like, Oh, you weren't there for when it was getting fuck you, whatever. But it was like, no, no, she just didn't like want to date him, so he just threw into the TV. And the first time was an accident, and then the second time he was like, "Yeah, I can throw people in the TV. Fuck yeah, let's do it." How do you accidentally find out you can throw people in the TV, and then how does he know that it's killing them? Like, well, well, at first he didn't know because at first, like, so they were at the lobby of the of the hotel with the reporter, and he's like talking to the reporter, known. And this is another bullshit I called out. They're at the lobby. The front lobby. No one is there. Like, sure, it's closed. But there's no one at the front desk. Like, just closing up or just whatever. Like, no one is there. Whatever. And he's, like, talking to her. That, like, she just happens to be right in front of the TV. And, like, he was gonna, like, punch her or, like, slap her. And as she's like, do, as he was, like, about to do that, she just fell into the TV. And she, he was like, whoa, he, she went to the TV. And then he left and not thinking much about it. And then he throws Saki in there. He's like, yeah, I'm not going to let you out. And then he just lets him die. He he just kind of leaves him there to die. And that's pretty much it. Like, how does, how does no one fucking know? Like, he threw all of them into the TV. How do they not know? Well, people? you see, the first two victims, no one was around. So no one saw them, even though Saki was at a police station inside the interrogation room no one saw him do it he must have turned off the camera like every dirty cop would in in every show turn off the t- turn off the camera throw them at the tv whatever so then you meet so this guy was the Juness tv that they jumped into not the Juness tv no this this was like this was the uh police station tv like the, like saki was in the so he uh people up Drags them to the police station. Oh, somehow. T- okay, okay, no, TV. okay. That part. Okay, so the the pe- so the party members that get thrown to the TV. That's completely. That's someone else. You're you're on the level that will reveal who that is. But it's this guy that is called. I I think his name is like Namami or whatever the fuck. Like he he's a delivery man. He he keeps going on. You find out he goes on about saying like how. He's saving these people by throwing them into the TV. Like he thinks that it's saving them by putting them into, inside the TV, not knowing that they're that they're fucked up. So he's like, "All right, oh, you can go show up on the Midnight Channel. She needs to go inside the TV. She'll be safe in there." So he throws her in, pretty much. So he just keeps throwing them in because he thinks he's doing the right thing by doing it. Comes out of nowhere, and he's like, "Yeah, by the way, I was the one throwing you into the now, TV." Now, well, it gets even more more convoluted from that. So. The first victim, the reporter lady that died, was the wife of that guy, of the delivery man. The delivery man was pissed off. He was like, why did she die? Whatever. He calls the police to, to report the murder. Adachi picks up, and he was like, dude, this dude's talking about going inside the TV. Oh, yeah? Like, he, he just kind of, like, just puts him off. He's like, yeah, I... I he kind of, like, tells the guy to throw people in, inside the TV. He kind of fucked with the dude's head, pretty much. He's like, yeah, the police are not going to believe you. Don't worry about it. You know, you're, you're selling a lunatic. Go go away. If you think that's saving them, throw them in the TV, man. 
And then, so he puts a TV inside a truck. He drives the truck around. He ha- he just throws the he throws people inside the TV inside the truck. So I think that's where we end Big Bun Cl- Game Club because yeah. that's about the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard in my entire life. I, I it's impressively stupid, and the fact that people are like, "Wow, this is one of the best games ever," is shocking. Because because it's so like. You never expect the delivery man. First, you think it's a delivery man. Then you realize he was being used by a dachi. And then, right, where and did then, this delivery man come from? We don't then, meet him until what seventy-seven hours into the game. Well, he's the in the back. He's in the background. He, like the the scenes where it's like the fog, you see like a silhouette. That's the delivery man. But then, the, then it gets even more funky too. So after you solve that. The world starts to get foggy, and it's like, dude, the fog is seeping from the TV. And then, like, you go into after Ad- Adachi, you go after him, and then Ad- they find out that there's another power that's controlling him, that's influencing him. So it's like, bad guy on top of bad guy on top of bad guy. That's what's so, so good about let it. Get, let me get this straight. And it's not even that you show up on the Midnight Channel because you were thrown into the TV. This delivery man is somehow saying, I saw this person on the TV. I know exactly who they are. I'm going to go to their house in the middle of the night and somehow undetected throw them into the TV. Well, you Fuck don't this game. You don't suspect a delivery man. You see the UPS driver every day. Do you sit there like, this guy is going to break in? No, you just let him come in. You, he drops the box off. He walks off. You don't think much of it. That's how, they, that's how he got Nanako. So you'll be honest with me. Do you think this makes any fucking sense? In term, well, I mean, it's 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 an anime plot. There is like a, there is a thread that's there. It does kind of make sense in what they tell you. Like I, this like, is psychotic for even <laughs> anime standards. This makes well, no fucking sense. You know, it's just like, uh oh, we need to make some shit up to cause, to explain this. It makes zero fucking sense. You know what, there's this YouTuber I, I started watching that analyzes these Persona stories. I'll give you his video and, he, and he'll explain it. Maybe he'll explain it better than me. Does, does he think it's not bullshit? I don't know his opinion on 4, but I know he liked Persona 3, but he also hated the answer. But since he liked Persona 3, I think he has a, he's a good opinion. <laughs> I, need, I need to fucking see this. Because but if you want to see stupid bullshit, go watch the an- watch the anime Kill la Kill. It's on Netflix. Watch that. It's it's a great Wait. show. Isn't Kill la Kill cool though? Kill la Kill's good, right? It, it is pretty cool. I like it. It's a great show. It's but it it deals with like clothes being as weapons. Like you you have to like you know they use clothing as weapons. I think I've ever already seen this. Like, this game is nonsense. It makes nothing makes sense. But fight, but All you know, clothes, like, powering hey. clothes, live, living life fibers makes sense. No, that's I'm okay with this as long <laughs> as it makes sense with the rules of the of the world. Uh, wh- what? At what point could this delivery man just teleport around? It makes no fucking sense. He drives it's around. Like, he, he knows the neighborhood. Yeah. Well, he knows the neighborhood. Yeah. He, he's a delivery man. He he delivers stuff to the y- Yamagi Inn all the time. And this and this shit in the TV is just localized to the to this town, and for some reason only these six children can fucking do it. it it's just stupid as fuck. Because these these All things, no, hey, anyone um, can do it, but uh, just these six children God. decided to go inside the TV. Everyone else doesn't. Do you go to your TV and just touch the screen, just feel it up? No, you're not gonna feel up your TV. Some fucking idiot child was like, "Hey, you can go into this TV." I'd be like, "All right, show me." All they had to do is go to fucking Dojima and be like, yo, Dojima, we can go into the fucking TV. And he would figure it out in 17 they, seconds. Dumb they fucking they talked to him about it, and he's like, "This is you're lying to me. You're a liar. And then they're like, no, I'm not. And they're like, well, you sound like a, lo- a lunatic. You're going to the police station, and you're going to tell me the truth. Look, we went inside the TV. You're still lying to me. That's it. You're staying here. I'm going home. Well then, well then, I have to say, no wonder this dumb fuck can't find his wife's killer because he doesn't fucking follow the like. 
If someone tells me that, I'll be at least be like, all right, well, let's let's see what the fuck you're talking about. He just says no. What a damn dumb fuck. He should die. Hope he gets hit by a fucking car. What a dumb fucking game. Oh my god. Fuck that shit. All right, I gotta go. Yeah. All right. All right. That's it for this for this episode. We'll we'll talk to you later. Again, director hate about his opinions to him, not me. I. I well, actually, you know what? I don't like Persona 4 either, so I, I get, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm Solis not gonna see did nothing wrong. Solis did nothing wrong. Yeah, Solis did nothing wrong. He went inside the TV and did nothing. <laughs>